Hi, this is Dr. Sue Cooper with the lecture video for Conic 300 at Towson University. In this video, we're going to be looking at the lecture notes, page three for chapter three. In the prior videos, we were talking about the difference between exploratory and explanatory data visualizations and how to um, think about the idea that you're communicating your findings to an audience and you want to make sure that they understand your conclusions. So you're going to choose the type of visualization that is appropriate for the data that you're presenting and uh, highlight things that are important uh, based on your conclusions and your predictions and prescriptions going forward. So in this on this page, we're gonna talk a little bit about the types of visualizations, meaning charts, graphs, images, models that you can use for categorical data. And uh, we're also gonna define categorical data and talk about the different kinds of categorical um, information that we may need to present. So the first thing we're gonna do is do the definition of categorical as opposed to uh, continuous data, which we'll talk about later. So categorical data is uh, qualitative data, meaning that it isn't uh, mathematical necessarily. It's more uh, based on categories. And we've talked a little bit about this before also in chapter two. Uh, the it's qualitative data uh, that are represented either by words or data might have numbers involved in it, but it's not numbers that are um, meaningful in the way in their value is what I'm trying to say. They could be meaningful in their order, but not in their value. So for example, you might categorize everyone with brown hair as one, everyone with black hair as two, everyone with red hair as three, but the one, two, and three are just numbers of categories. The one versus the two doesn't mean one of something or two of something. If it did, we would call that quantitative data or uh, numerical data. So this is not that, this is qualitative. So it's text-based, category-based, it's more conceptual, categorical data is. And if it, if it includes any numbers, the numbers aren't meaningful in their value. They're only meaningful as a way to categorize items. So we've got three types of categorical data here on the notes for definitions. The first one is nominal data. And this is categorical data that cannot be ranked. So there is no ranking of priority. So like I was saying with the hair color example, even if you put everyone with brown hair in the category group one and everyone with black hair in the category group two, it doesn't necessarily mean that the brown hair is first and the black hair is second, like first place, second place. The order doesn't matter. You could just as easily put brown hair in group two and black hair in group one, and it wouldn't make any difference to your analysis. So that's what we call nominal data. Um, it's not ranked even if numbers are involved and the values of the number don't matter. The second kind is ordinal data. Now this, uh, in this kind of categorical data, the order actually does matter. So if you wanted to, and the examples we have here is if you wanted to categorize students by grades. So you could have them, uh, like all the students who had got an A versus all the students who got a B and all the students who got a C. And the order does matter because the A's have better grades and got higher scores than the students with B. And they already have better scores and better grades or maybe did more work than the students with the C. It doesn't necessarily mean that, but that is the idea is that they're ranked in order. Uh, same with the medals uh, in the Olympics. Gold is the best, then silver, then bronze. Um, ordinal data is often collected for psychological evaluations where you're ranking um, how likely you are or unlikely you are to do something. We call that a Likert scale. So if you like it or you dislike it, the course evaluations that we have at the end of the semester for all of your classes uh, are usually an ordinal data. So if you put that you um, thought the class was a good class to take and you ranked it as a four and someone else ranked it as a five, it doesn't necessarily mean that the five is 25% they liked it 25% more than the four, so the values don't matter. 
between four and five, but just the order matters. So someone who put a four might, or I'm sorry, someone who put a five, if they like the class or not, might only like it very slightly more than the person who put a four. Um, but the distance between those values isn't as important as the fact that they are in an, a specific order. So that's what we call ordinal data and the name ordinal kind of uh, suggest that they have a specific order. And then the last one is the numerical data. These are the quantitative data. They are um, the data that we would use to do mathematics with. Numerical data are meaningful numbers. Oh, I said there was three kinds of categorical. I'm so sorry. There is two kinds of categorical data. The nominal and the ordinal are the categorical data. And then the numerical data is our quantitative. This is the non-categorical data. So this numerical data down here at the bottom of this block, this is separate from the other three. Um, so numerical data, the numbers are gonna be in there and they're gonna mean something. So if we are going to say that I am twice as likely to do this dangerous activity as someone else, then that twice as likely matters because it's two times more, uh, twice as large of a difference uh, from the first person. And uh, we would see this also in the um, percentage grades. So if a student got a 98% and another student got an 88%, there's a 10% difference in the number of questions they got right or the work they did or something like that. So the, the distance between the numbers matters oh, and the value of the number matters. Um, when we're doing heights, you to put in your your height in inches. So if one person is 60 inches and another person is 67 inches, then everyone with a 60 and everyone with a 67, they're all going to be seven inches difference in height. It doesn't necessarily mean that the person who's 60 and the person with 67, the 67 is just taller without some specified amount. So when we're talking about numerical data, the amount of the value of the number matters. And the other two, nominal and ordinal, which are both types of categorical data, then if there are numbers involved, the, the value or the amount of the number doesn't matter. Okay, so let's look at the kinds of charts that we can use for categorical data. Um, pie charts are really common, and this will give you proportional relationships uh, for parts of a whole. And so I'm sure you've all seen pie charts. When you make a pie chart, you should put the percentage numbers and the labels in the pie, if at all possible. Don't just rely on the legend. It makes it harder to read and takes longer. It, pie charts shouldn't have very many more, if any more than six slices in them. If you get too many slices, then they're too difficult to read. And it's actually not beneficial to be using the chart at all because it actually obfuscates or makes the information you're trying to present harder for the viewer to uh, comprehend. All right, and then we've got three kinds of uh, bar charts or column charts. So a bar chart is a, it's gonna go horizontally side to side. And uh, usually it's for very categorical bits of data and we don't want anyone to mistake it for uh, numerical data or ordinal data. So we use categorical bar charts, uh, I'm sorry, horizontal bar charts uh, for to show information at a single point in time. And the categories are, and the bars are usually names of things or names of the categories. And then you'll uh, make the bar long enough to indicate how many of the uh, observations are in that individual category. You can do the exact same thing with vertical column charts, which are, or vertical bar charts. Uh, sometimes we will use vertical column charts to do categories that go over time, even though I said earlier that it is um, usually advisable to use a line graph when you're showing data over time, you can also use the vertical column chart to do the same thing as long as you categorize your data into groups of dates. So for example, you could put it in groups of years, uh, groups of months, how many sales are in each year or each month, how many people are in each division, things like that. I mean, I'm sure you've seen a bar chart. Uh, comparative column charts combine pie charts and 
of column charts. It's basically, um, it's not really a pie anymore. It just becomes like a, a tall bar with different percentages of the whole with different colors. Um, let me show you what it looks like on page four. So here's a stacked column chart. Um, and you can see you've got the different categories of data. Uh, it's kind of like a rectangular pie chart is how they've got it. And I think I just made a mistake because this says comparative column chart, not stacked. So I was talking about stacked. Okay. So the stacked are the ones like the pie chart where it's got a pie, but it's a rectangle. And you divide up the different categories of data into the proportions and then you present the proportions as a bar chart instead of a pie chart but it's essentially the same presentation the comparative column chart is on the bottom of page four right here and we've got the different comparisons between two variables so it's basically two graphs in one so that we can compare the data between the two uh, north year one, year two, south, year one, year two, east, year one, year two, so on and so forth. So you can see how each category has two comparative years in there. And then the horizontal bar chart just has one. And again, you can combine them and make it more complicated. Uh, up here at the top, we've got an example of a pie chart. The one on the left is a good pie chart. And uh, I think that there's enough room to actually include the labels inside the pie rather than in the legend. And if you, there is enough room, that is what you should do. Uh, so you don't have to look back and forth between the pie and the legend. But I like that they put the percentages in there. Notice how the um, colors of the text change. On the lighter colored pie slices, the tan and the yellow, the text is black. And then on the darker colored pie slices, the green, blue, and red, the text is white. And you might not have even noticed that at first glance, but it's actually kind of an important distinction because if you're looking at this pie chart and you have to squint to see the number, it's not an effective chart. Where the purpose of doing these visualizations is to make data uh, to help the user and the viewer understand the data quickly. And if they have to spend a lot of time figuring out what your chart even says because they can't read the numbers, then you aren't accomplishing that goal. And that leads us right over to this pie chart on the right that has way too many slices. This is not helpful. We can see that we've got a lot of blue, but the legend is so small that it's difficult to even see what the blue is. And really all we're gonna learn about on this pie chart is that the blue, green, and one of the grays, and it's hard to tell which gray is which in this chart, uh, make up most of the data. And then everything else is the last 25%-ish, 30%. And not a good chart it has way too many slices. So they need to um, change this chart to maybe only have six slices and the last slice could be other. So instead of listing out each individual one that's 1%, 1%, 2%, they could just clump all of those remaining smaller slices into one bigger slice and call it other. Uh, and this one here, this tree map, this one isn't in the list on the prior page, but they do talk about it a little bit in the summary of the chapter. And a tree map is a lot like a pie chart, but it just it does the same function in rectangles instead of pie slices. And so the whole entire population is all the green and red, purple, blue, and orange all together. And then they've got the different colors. So green is California. Blue, Alabama, red, Florida, purple, Texas, and the orange is New York. And then they've got those subdivided into little categories. And the different shades of color, you can still see what state it belongs to, but then they've got it separated by, I guess those are cities for the different shades of each color. And so it's it's a way to show proportions of a whole in a way that you can get more slices in than a regular pie chart. All right, so back here, uh, stacked bar charts, we talked about that. It's a combination of a proportional scale and a bar chart. Word cloud and a field geographic map. Um, a word cloud, I'm sure you've seen these, and but maybe you didn't realize that the larger the words are, the more times that particular word shows up in the text. That's how they're created. So if a word is used 
a lot of times, then it'll be the biggest word in the word cloud. And then a map, you know what a map is. So we'll go here. Um, oh, well, I'll do that at the end. All right, so here's word cloud on the right. It looks like the words that are used the most in this set, this text is questions, material, out, and made. Uh, this is something that you can use if you want to find. It's pretty. It's a pretty rough analysis, and it relies a lot on word choice. But if you are interested in finding out what words show up most in a set of text, then a word cloud is what you're going to want to use. Uh, and then obviously here, this is a map. This is a geospatial map. The book talks about a field map. A field map has different colors for categories, and the geospatial map shows the distance between elements on the map. So this is a map of the Bourbon Trail in Kentucky, if you uh, go back up here. Taught, there was one more thing I remembered I wanted to tell you about the uh, column charts. So the one on the left is a vertical column chart, first year, second year, third year, fourth year. It's got as a category the one on the right has way too many bars and too many categories again like with the um pie chart there you'd have to keep looking back and forth um with the pie chart that was had too many yeah this one on the right this uh stacked column chart here i'm sorry just the column chart on the right here in this uh view there's too many uh, columns. We can't tell what we're even looking at. So we either need to combine some of them or put them on separate charts or find a different way to do this analysis so that we don't have so much detail. Um, when your charts get this much detail, it's almost worse to have it in a chart than it is to just put it in a table of numbers. The charts are supposed to make things less confusing, not more confusing. All right. So I, that is, ooh, whoops, that is it for page three. And uh, we also went through and looked at the examples of each of those charts in pages four and five. So the next video is going to be uh, starting on page six of the notes. All right, I'll see you then.